Hello, everyone, and welcome to Season 5 of Goddamn GameCube. If you like our show, please leave us a rating on Spotify and subscribe on YouTube. Thank you, and enjoy today's episode. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Goddamn GameCube. Greg and Riley are your hosts today, and today we are talking about Celeste. And uh, I want to start right off the bat here about why we're covering Celeste. Uh, we're covering Celeste for two reasons. Uh, the first reason being um, we've made it a tradition on the show that we're covering a slate of indie games every season. There's going to be a couple of episodes involving indies. And the second reason why we're covering Celeste, there's some humor here. Um, yeah, during season one of Goddamn GameCube, um, I got my I got my ass handed to me by uh, our fans and our detractors. I made some comment about Celeste a few years back. I don't remember exactly what the quote was. The quote was something like, "I I just I've never played Celeste. I'm just not very interested in playing it, or like I don't care about it." It right. was something like that. Well, uh, we were going down, if I remember correctly. We did a couple episodes early on with the top 100 games of the decade, as well as the console generation. I think Celeste came up on at least one of them. And a lot of games, people gave us a lot of shit because we hadn't played a lot of them yet. And we were a little, maybe a little dismissive at the time. But uh, <laughs> I think it's kind of funny, though, like because we're now covering it literally years later. Yeah, I mean, we get around to, to everything eventually. But yeah. Um, no, we finally played it. Yep. Um, this is this is a uh, a 2D platformer game uh, about a young woman named Madeline who is uh, attempting to climb a mountain with a uh, strange power called Celeste. And you and I both thought that initially what, that Celeste was the name of the person. Yeah, I, I remember I said to you off mic, I said, I thought Celeste would be the name of the character. It's the right. name of the mountain. The name of the mountain. And yep. what I found out, I'm not sure if you were aware of this, there is a real... Mount Celeste in uh, British Columbia, which really? is, which is uh, what they named it. I mean, that's where the similarities end. But um, it's it's uh, on Vancouver Island. Okay, it's up there. This is supposed to take place in the same like region, I think. Um, the real Celeste is only about nineteen hundred feet high, while the fictional Celeste is closer to ten thousand. Okay, so it's an exaggeration, but um, yeah, you mentioned uh, you know kind of trying to to make good on our our uh, our flippants. <laughs> uh, from from the past, I want to make it known in season one. We did not say we didn't like it. We just didn't play. We, we didn't play it. We hadn't played it yet. But there there is quite a lot of uh, critical acclaim. Yes. There's a very very loyal devoted fan base. Um, the uh, I think the art style looks awesome like during gameplay, especially it looks awesome. Um, and a lot of uh, adoration by like the queer community was mm -hmm. was a huge um, kind of factor in like. It's it's very highly spoken about um, with respect to uh, the messages that people are taking away from it, and I think the first time I actually heard about it was a donkey video, really, because he was playing it, he was recommending it at the end of a year, and it was, um, yeah, it's 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 an incredible uh, indie game experience uh, developed by uh, Maddie Makes Games, or uh, I think Extremely Okay Games is the other. It yeah, I think that's. Now? I think uh, Maddie makes games became extremely okay right. games. Is that right? I believe so. Um, twenty eighteen, it came out. Um, they also developed uh, Towerfall in twenty three. Did you play that one? No, I didn't, but I'm aware of it. Um, and they have a, 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 apparently a new game coming out this year called Earthblade. Correct. So, yeah, so that's kind of interesting. Um, and this, this, what we're talking about right now, Celeste is truly actually a reimagining of. A very simple game that was created by the director's name is Maddie Thorson and programmer slash artist Noel Berry during a um, four day game jam, which we talked about this previously in the Donut County episode. Correct. It's one of those. Um, it's kind of a thing where you you just uh, rush to create a game as fast as possible using as limited resources as possible um, for uh, the Pico Eight, which is uh, is a little more complicated than this description, but in this context. It's basically a game engine that mimics the capabilities of a 1980s, uh, like 8-bit game. Sure. And um, the entirety of that is playable in this game as like an arcade cabinet. Oh, and, that's cool. And I did finish it. I want to say that. That's I cool. I want to get that on the record. But um, yeah, just getting into how it plays. Um, it's mostly jumping 
dashing and holding onto walls. Yes. Um, and you just, you know, kind of similar to like classic Mario stuff, avoiding hazards and pitfalls. And you have a hidden stamina meter because you can only like climb up vertically up a surface for so long. Exactly. And I like that a lot. I do too. Um, and I wanted to mention too that I don't know how, how deep into these like like fan videos that you you watch, but there are so many things that you can do in this game that I just didn't do. Okay. Um, like a lot more advanced moves you can pull. Like if you're like, if you, you've sunk how many hours into this game, you can pull off these really incredible things that are just kind of under the hood. Yeah. Like there's a very high skill ceiling, we'll say. Um, our very lively speed running community as well seems to make very good use of all these tricks. Um, some of these I would say are even like, it's, it's really like the difference of a few pixels between life and death watching like the gifts and videos. I, I was just like, I need like a frame by frame of what's happening here. Yes. Like it's so like the, the, the level that some people are playing at, I'm just like, I am, I'm totally like, <laughs> I'm, I mean, I'm in the, the woods I think here. like kind of right off the bat here, what I find interesting about this game is you do have a death counter. Yeah. And so, I be- I can't remember the exact quote um, from the developer um, where they said something like they it, it wasn't too different from what Dark Souls Miyazaki says about games where they the developer of this game does not find the game to be difficult. They find it is the kind of it's the kind of curve or the kind of game they wanted to make. Yeah. Which does that make sense where no, we're not doing it to be punishing. We like games that are balanced this way where you have to learn. Yeah, and it it, it I think you know f- I, there there's some room for improvement which we'll get into, but in terms of I think that fits like the theme of the game pretty well. Yeah, 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 like um perseverance, perseverance, whatever. Better than better yeah. than uh than it would otherwise. Um a lot of like the kind of tricks that I was talking about, mostly just kind of dashing or bouncing at the right times. Um but what I find really interesting, there's like situations where if you are facing the same direction as spikes, like they won't hurt you. Oh, and like if you're jumping like t- towards a array of spikes, but you're in the same direction, it's not going to affect you at all. Interesting. Which is pretty cool. Um, and there's also what they called a coyote time, like Wiley Coyote, where if you walk off uh, the edge of a cliff, there will be a, a very small grace period where you can jump in midair. Like you're, you're oh, OK, you have a little bit of uh, freedom there. Like if you know the timing pretty well, which is helpful. And you also have, you know, various environmental assets that either amplify or modify the game in some way. Like you bounce on the clouds. Um, there's the star blocks and the bubbles that accelerate your dashes. You're right. Um, the green gems, they replenish your dashes. And then you get the golden feather uh, towards the end. A couple of different, like, you know, pretty standard stuff. But um, if that's like, you know, it, it's it's I think it's overall like they didn't throw too much at me. Well, this game, for a game that has very few mechanics, it's considered to be a masochistic, like, level platforming game. Yeah. And especially with respect to the opt-in challenges kind of thing. Like, if you're if you're someone who's, like, like obsessed with this game and you just need it to be, like, challenged. Like, there's, like, the strawberries and stuff. Sure. And there's, like, the B-sides and C-sides, which are, like, even harder and, and that kind of thing. Um, what did you think about, in general, like, I, I think I, I went for a fair amount of the strawberries. You didn't go for as many. What did you think about like just the straight up gameplay of what you had to do, like the fairness of it? So I think I was typing this to you off mic. I think it was in one of our chats. I said, I think I have a problem with this game, but I'm not sure if it's a problem or not. Where I feel like this game has no rhythm and no sense of pacing, but I think it's on purpose. Yeah. Where each jump and each obstacle is so precise and there is very little room for error and every failure is game over, almost. Um, and so it's it's hard for me to put my finger on uh, or sort of summarizing this gameplay beyond it is very, very precise platforming, and I'm not sure. I'm just not. I'm not. I'm not sure. I'm. I'm debating saying I'm not sure what the intention is. I think the intention is they want you to fail and learn, but I'm. I'm not sure how much I like that. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure. Well, yeah, we 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 talked about Limbo a lot recently, which is kind of a similar thing where you touch one hazard, you die yes. instantly, and it's. I think I like it 
well enough in this game where you're back in the action. So it's kind of a Rayman thing. Sure. You're, there's no loading screen upon game over. You just, you immediately reload and try it again. Yeah. It's, I think if it didn't have that, it would be a lot more frustrating than sure. it is. You can like, you can try a lot of things without losing a ton of your time. Yeah. I think is, is the advantage of that. I think like, um, if I were to compare this game to a game like Rayman Legends yeah. or and Origins, where Rayman Legends and Origins are really fast-paced, difficult platformers, yeah. but they have a rhythm to them. Like mm-hmm. There's a music to those games. Like When you start to get into a rhythm of running and jumping, you can really feel it. There's no feel in it in Celeste, if you ask me. It's just brutal, like room after room after room of challenges. As well, especially as it, as it goes along. Yes. Um, I think, and, and there's when you do finally get it that's where the rhythm comes in but it takes you it will depending on your experience level with platformers etc and your comfort for this kind of thing it can take you like there were some challenges that were like, correct totally broke my balls yes me too <laughs> many times and it's i i mean we're gonna get into a lot of the metaphor metaphorical context uh for this the whole the work as a whole but i think a moment that struck me at a certain point was like man this this challenge or whatever i was doing i was like this is so sadistic and like i think maybe that's what they're getting as like certain things in life feel sadistic like why can't this just be easier right 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 and it's like i it's uh i think it, it suits the game's narrative uh pretty well um i think it, it's it's one of those things where like if if um if uh someone has it out for you right mm-hmm. and they can't beat you fair and square they're gonna try to get you on the technicality and there's sure. a lot of technicalities in this like yes. the level design right mm-hmm. um i think also the the difficulty also gives a little bit more substance than some of the indie platforms like it's a game with a capital g oh yeah you know, there's yeah for a, sure there's like reverse is like kind of a more um atmosphere oriented game this is very like this is like a gamer's game for sure yeah more than you would think more than you'd think it's not it's not a cutesy uh no a cutesy game too much um i do personally feel like some bits went on for too long yes um and i'm not sure i'm sure some of it was it was intentional but i'm speaking more from like a pacing perspective in terms of like the chapter length like the ebb and flow of like the the challenge and release didn't really feel right to me sort of dragged it like like at the end of i think it was like the haunted house chapter where i was just like this is is this still going on you yes. know like like yeah. i'm like i get it like i get yeah. the whole ghost of those thing you know it, it just felt like it was going on a little too long yeah for me personally um i did want to highlight one thing in particular which kind of differs from miyazaki it was talking about the accessibility options there's a lot of praise for that where you can turn on um invincibility um, unlimited dashes or slowing down the game. So if it's something that, and, and, um, the director, Maddie Thorson, uh, mentioned this, she addressed like, from my perspective as the game's designer, assist mode does break the game. I spent many hours fine tuning the difficulty of Celeste. So it's easy for me to feel precious about the design. Ultimately, we do want to empower the player and give them a good experience, and sometimes that means letting go. Do you, do you, what do you think about that quote? Yeah, I was actually going to bring it up before you did, where I, I I was recalling where I believe Maddie did have a quote where she said, like, she tuned the game specifically to play like this. Yeah. And she, from what the, what I gather, she does not like, you know assist modes easy modes breaking the game's difficulty that she tried so hard to tune but for her i think the quote goes on to say i could be misphrasing this i believe she goes on to say that if it lets more people play it and experience it then that's okay with me if it's a separate mode right yeah yeah i mean i I agree with i I think it, it says a lot about you know the ego or lack thereof where sure. she, she's okay with that you know right, I, right, I, right. I, I appreciate that um Wait, just to be clear, you and I did it on straight up. Like I did it on straight up normal. I did too. Yeah. Yep. Um, I uh, I uploaded a video getting a very tough strawberry on our YouTube channel. If there's uh, any a video doubt, called Tricky Strawberry. Tricky Strawberry. Um, wait, you see, did you do any of these? I purposely avoided strawberries. Like I, I didn't bother. I, the thing about it is that I maybe got twelve the whole game. It was. I think I got. There's like close to 200. I think I got 104. Okay. Um, and it's the thing about it is that it's what I like about them is that they're right there. They're not like vital. Um, and they, they really, one thing that I would say is a very strong positive here. 
um, is that they don't show you the counter until the end of the level. Yes. So you don't, I'm not like obsessing in the hunting of the them level. Down. Like, where the fuck is that last one? And as so I was thinking about like how this contrasts with, um, oh, we were talking about Condemned 2. Yes. Where you, it's showing you like your ranking in the middle of a mission. And it's just like, don't do that. I like, know. I'm trying to get into it here, you know? Yep. So I like that it wasn't, it was less like invasive than some other collectibles. Um, and it's sometimes too like it's it's within sight. I'm like it's within reach. You yeah, know? Let's like try it's, it. Or you're, you're blowing right by it. Might as well try. I I yeah. And I, I think what else it does is that if you if you do some of those, it kind of improves your reflexes and your your general performance. Sure, in the game it increases as well. your knowledge on how the game works. Yeah, like there was a part where you told me you were stuck on for a while with like an elevator platform or yep. something. And I had, I think I had seen it earlier in a strawberry challenge. Yeah. So I was like, okay, I know what to do here. But if you weren't doing that, you would have no fucking. Yeah, clue. it was. It was one of these puzzles where if you ride the elevator up, it gives you momentum to right. jump better or jump bigger. Jump but higher. I didn't understand that. Right. Yeah. Um. But yeah, so it gives you a little preview of that, or just just kind of improves your understanding of the game. Well, you know what I struggled with is during the wind level when you have to climb up the wall with nothing but just like the a button yeah i was mm -hmm. like what the fuck do i do yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> that was really confusing but overall i do say I, I i would say that like i enjoy the way it plays like in terms of the like the fluidity and like the yes. control the the degree of control that you have over your jumps and everything i like the wall climbing a lot which is not something you see in in every platformer like this mm -hmm. um i thought that was great i mean it's just like little gripes here and there about like all right, that one, it, I don't know if that one was my fault. You know, like, yeah, like so yeah, there's yeah, a couple yeah, yeah. moments like that, or it's like you could have given me a little bit more. Or like there's, there's, a, there's essentially every room in the game is like no margin for error. Like you couldn't have just like let me jump back and try it again. Everything is game over. Yeah, like, it's like you do oh it, do it in one try or, or you're yep. fucked. Um, but overall, I would say that I enjoyed playing it. Um what do we think about the for, strictly for gameplay, the art style and the sound design? I don't know if I've ever seen a game that looks like this and plays like this combined. Yeah. Where you have like a 16 bit platformer, but a lot of it is like vertical and physics based. Yeah. Right. There's a lot. I almost like a really fast paced, like original Rain Man or. I'm not going to say Metroid, but a little bit of yeah. like this climbing. And it's interesting. Well, the, the way they have the, the area set up in particular is very, like very Metroid vertical. Yeah. Um, kind of similar to hollow Knight in places, I guess. Yes. Um, and there's um, what well, I really like, like the way that they, they create, you know, color gradients. There's a lot of like cool sunrises and stuff yep. like that. And I, something I didn't want to uh, overlook is you brought up the stamina earlier and how they, they portray that I thought was very, uh, uh, economical yes. where um after a dash like the uh your hair changes color yep um and then when you're climbing as your stamina is running out you see her start to like sweat or exert a little yes. bit mm -hmm. i thought that was great um and with respect to the sound design always a big fan of gibberish speak number yeah, one yeah, yeah rayman speak rayman speak and i think it's it's pretty impressive that Despite the fact that every character talks using this this way, they all have their kind of own voices, like the yep. way that they're, they're their own gibberish stuff. speak. Yeah, I, I like that a lot. Um, so, uh, adjacent, what do we think about the um, when they're they're talking to each other, or the UI kind of art style? Um, okay. I think it, it's interesting how like it, the game looks sixteen bitty, but when you have like a cinematic or when dialogue boxes show up, it's more modern in 3d. I think it's fine. Um, I didn't really think about it until you brought it up, how they're contrasting. Yeah. I feel like perhaps, you know what it is? You get to at least see the characters faces. Cause in a 16 bit game, you wouldn't, right. You kind of get to, I think it's trying to give you a more personal relationship with what they look like. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's fair. I think the, the art style in particular was not really to my taste, but like, I, I like that about it. I like the purpose it serves. Um, and I like how legible it is. I thought that was a very, very strong asset. Of the I game. also think what they're doing is they're trying to like purposely break down like ludonarrative like aspects of the game where 
they're almost trying to disconnect the climbing from the conversations. Like, uh, Madeline is not going to die a thousand times, like, to reach this mountain. She's going to die none times. Right. Right? I feel like they're trying to be like, no, the conversations are pushing the story forward, but the climbing is the 16-bit part. Like, they're almost like they're... No, does that make sense? Yeah, well, like they're, the, they're visually different on purpose. Like, like the conversations are a reality, and the climbing is more metaphorical. Metaphorical. That's right. a great way to put it. Yeah, I like that 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 interpretation of it for sure. And I also like um, during the in the menu when you see the 3D model of the mountain, and you see where each area is in relation to each other, and each and also in relation to its elevation. Yeah, exactly. Pretty cool. Um, I, I I want to uh, to to wax poetic here a little bit. I think the soundtrack is my favorite part of the whole thing. It's very good. Um, Lena Rain is the the composer. Um, I think the soundtrack is a big part of. You were talking about the rhythm and stuff. What really kept me going, especially in the early the early chapters, is how like bumping the soundtrack is. It's yep, like the whole it's, time. It's it just keeps keeps you moving. It's very very listenable, very melodic. Um, incredibly groovy. And there were some parts that I swear, this is probably just, this is a me thing. We were talking about this recently. If a lot of like muse stuff was happening, <laughs> you know, like some of the bass parts were, dun, 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 dun. I'm sure. like, ah, oh, this is so fucking muse. But you know, some, some of it's like, like sort of more, um, like blade runnery, sure, evangelist, sure, sure. that kind of guy. And I did like, um, uh, her philosophy was that each character, is um, represented by a different instrument. Yeah, uh, so mm-hmm. I, I like different that motif. A lot sure, as well, like um, your buddy's the the good kind of like a good soft guitar. Talking about Theo. Yeah, and um, yeah, it's it's I don't know. It's just like a, a lot more thoughtful than I expected. Yes, from uh, a sound design perspective, exactly. And I, what I I love about it is I think the two strongest themes in the game are. Madeline's and the the evil twin and the fan community refers to her as Battleline. Yes. They both have their own kind of um motif or theme. Yep. And at the the end, spoiler alert, they they kind of reconcile and the themes merge. Right. And it's just it's very excellent. thoughtful. It's so good. But I love this. I was literally like just walking around listening to it on, on streaming and stuff. I thought it was incredible. But um should we get into the uh the story? Yeah, I feel like that's a bulk of this game. Yeah. Um, so I'm just going to go kind of chapter by chapter here doing yep. the highlights. Yep. That's what I've got. So, um, the prologue, uh, you have Madeline arrives at Celeste mountain and meets the granny who is very kind of, she's just kind of negging you. <laughs> like, yes. uh, you're not gonna, you're not gonna you're do everybody. You everybody climbing. comes here, you know? And, um, but you know, nevertheless, she persisted and, uh, you have chapter one, which is the city, mm-hmm. which I thought was a very cool location. Where you meet your buddy here, Theo, and he's he's like a social media like influencer. Yep, and um, he's, he's just, here to kind of take selfies on the mountain. Yeah, just kind of like it, a, a lot more casually than because yep. Madeline is really. You get the sense that she's doing it to challenge herself and, yes. and you know get over some some stuff. And um, I it's uh it's it's I feel like there was a very easy way to fuck this character up, and I and he was endearing to me. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think so. Um. And I did want to mention early on, uh, you you see this uh, memorial, which I thought was very poignant, and it just says "dedicated to those who perished on the climb." Mm-hmm. And it's very just kind of it's you you kind of get what it's getting at pretty early on, I think. Yeah. Um, unless you're like an idiot, like <laughs> sure. you know, like if you if you okay, like you can read this game a couple different ways, but it's pretty pretty clear to me this is about more than just mountain climbing sure right? yeah of course um well they also kind of tell you that kind of yeah I, but at this point in the game it's pretty it's like that's kind of your first real sure like nugget i guess um but what i thought was awesome here was the dream sequence where yeah i um because you you fall asleep because i saved here mm-hmm. and then like when i went back into the game like she woke up and it's like everything's different. I'm like, is that because I saved? But it's just the next part of the game. And so this is the part where you you have all those like space blocks and stuff. Yes. And um what it's it's another like very clearly metaphorical moment where she sees herself in the mirror, and this is where uh the battle line character comes out. You know, this is actually one of the moments that surprised me yeah. in this game. I did not think we would get any fantasy elements in yeah. this game or any sort of quote unquote magical or like otherworldly. I thought it would be very, I thought it would be very str- like, I don't know what the word is, straight laced or very. For, for the most part, it, it, 
it worked for me because it's like a dream thing. But I feel like this game does get more fantastical as it goes too. Yeah. Um, and then you kind of come back to Earth uh, sure. at the end. But this this part reminded me a lot of uh, Dark Rayman. Oh, okay. Yep, 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 yep. And I loved how it's really because this this dark version of herself is really like dr- trying to drag her down. Like, you know, like, no, you, you can't, can't do, do this. It. Why you blah, blah, blah. You're going to hurt yourself, blah, blah, blah. And it's 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 really effective because like to avoid her, you really have to to kind of know your own capabilities. Sure. And, like, she is just going to mirror everything that you do. And it's 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 it becomes a very interesting facet of the game where she has to reckon with this this um, negative side of herself. Right. Yep. So you, uh, you you get shot of her for a bit, and um, do you remember this part with the payphone? I thought was kind of interesting. Yeah, you you call home, right? Do you call your mother? Yeah. So there's there's two actually. One it's reminded me a little of Disco Elysium, where um, she gets a call in the dream, presumably for, like from her ex. Yes. And then when she wakes up, she calls uh, her mom, and it's it's a very kind of just like. Like, what am I doing here? Yeah. <laughs> kind of moment. And it's like, yeah, it's it's a great bit. Um, what did you think of the uh, the hotel uh, level? This is where it also you, it reminds me of like Dampe, right? Or from Ocarina of Time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah where what? like, so this hotel level, this is where I said this game has more fantasy elements than I thought yeah. it would have. Essentially, this you go into this hotel and the hotel keeper is a, like a ghost. And he says, he's almost asking you like, oh, you're here to stay for the night. But, the, you know, the place is trashed and in disarray. And it obviously there's like spikes and glowing stuff and weird shit everywhere. But he's acting as if you want to stay there as a guest. Yeah. And you're trying to just get through it to get to the other side. And you have to help him like clean stuff up and stuff. You have to help him like clean up the hotel. Yeah. But, and you, you I've, I'm you, i pretty sure it, it's it's not overtly obvious at the time that he's a ghost. Right. And it's, it's like you kind of figure it out over. It, it kind of it looks like it to me or to the player, right? And it's it's uh, but on the within the character's context, they're they're just kind of like playing along until trying to be polite. Well, right? I also I think what's interesting not only about the hotel but every chapter. Not only do you get a little more story, they give you a new platforming challenge. Yeah, like in the hotel, if I recall, it's you can only hold on to a platform so long because spikes will grow out of it spikes grow is that right that was this yeah it's like a lava kind of thing correct like so you can only touch the surface once yeah that's right yeah what i have in my notes is it makes you really think about if i can only touch the surface once what's my move yeah and and they really go nuts with that when it comes to like the strawberries yes like it's really like how the fuck because like okay i can figure out how to do this once to get through the level but how am i gonna do it twice to get the strawberry and it really makes you think outside the box um so i i enjoyed this part a lot i was i was kind of so so on the boss fight it was one of those situations where i was just like ah it's a little too long well the boss fights are really chase sequences yes yeah yeah um and you have to you have to basically just avoid uh the ghosts the ghost hotel manager. Well, what happens is Battleline kind of fucks it up for you. Yeah. Where she says, Battleline like says to the hotel keeper, like, this oh, place Madeline is like, like pities you or she's just trying to get out of here. She's just being nice to you like for shits. Yeah. She doesn't actually like you. Right. She's and just... so then the hotel owner kind of turns into a monster and it starts a chase sequence. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So yeah, it's, this becomes kind of a, an undercurrent where she's sort of undermining your, your quest where every, sure. every time you, you think you're making progress. She holds you back, um, but it's a cool bit. So uh, chapter four is pretty much just the wind level. There's not a lot that happens narratively. It's actually one of my favorite platforming levels in this game is the yeah. wind level. Yeah. Um, anything in particular? So I feel like I think there's a couple of wrinkles. The wind is extreme where it really affects the physics of your jumping. Yeah. I believe this is also where you encounter clouds that make your jumps higher if you bounce on them. Is this also the one with like the the... I almost said I almost said blue balls on Mike. Like <laughs> you just said, I just did. Uh, th- isn't that this too? Where like you can, if you touch a blue, like one of the the blue circles, you get another dash or something. I think that's also in this. Yeah, um, and it, it's it's very kind of it it the wind changes direction as well. Yeah, so you have to really be conscious of like how much oomph you're putting into your jumps and like yes. you know which direction you're going and stuff i did think it was like like level design wise very creative but just in terms of what we have to talk about narratively not a lot um but this is also at the end of this is where 
um, Madeline has a panic attack. Okay. Can we talk about this for a second? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Am I stupid or like this took me like forever to figure out how to how to beat this? It took me probably longer than it should have. I did not. <laughs> maybe I'm crazy. I did not understand for the first maybe 10 minutes of this if my control stick was controlling the feather or the box. Right. And then I, I finally figured that out. Right. And then it's very easy. Yeah. But that took me minutes upon minutes to understand what was happening. I, like, I, I um she's what having a panic attack on a, res, on a on a Resident Evil 4 gondola. Yes. And um Theo is with you and he says, you know, um something that helped me is just imagine a feather like floating up and down and match it with your breathing, yes. right? And this is kind of I'm pretty sure this is what leads into the feather being the like item a, at the end of the game up. that helps you fly. Yeah, like so you you very briefly like you turn into like a comet and then, you know, for a couple seconds and then you, you, it's, it times out. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's just kind of like a metaphorical thing, but there's a little sort of mini game sort of thing where you, you get her over it by trying to match the pace of the feather as it yes. goes up and down. Yes. And it comes back later where you just can't do it yeah. at all. But in this moment, I agree with you where I was like, I thought, because this is the first time something in this game happened like this, yep. I didn't realize that it was interactive at first. Yes, exactly. So I was like, is this a cutscene? Like, what's going on here? Yeah, but, is this a cinematic? Um, and I'm like, which which item am I controlling? I don't get it. Right, yeah. So I, I was I figured that out eventually, but um, definitely pretty pretty weird. But um, the, uh, the next one is the Mirror Temple. Did you like this one? So this one I found to be a little bit irritating because yeah. it was so dark and there are so many secret passageways to strawberries. Yeah. I wasn't sure what the real path was it's at so many points. That's a that's an issue I have with a lot of games where it's like, I wish the signposting was clear where if you just want to stick to the main path, like stick to the main path, or if you want to... Um, I, I hate it when I'm looking for extras in a game and I get locked out of them because I accidentally picked the main path. Yes. It's like either or I need to, I need that to be clear in games in general. And is this the one where Theo gets trapped in a crystal? Yes. Can I tell you something funny? I yeah. have a note written down here as a comparison game. I hope you have this. It reminds me of when you play uh, in Jabu Jabu's belly as young Link in Ocarina of Time. You can carry the princess, pr Princess yeah. Rudo, and throw her around. Yeah, and yeah. I reminded me exactly of that. I'm sure. I'm sure that was uh, that was an influence. But I, what I was surprised about was how I thought it was going to be a lot more cumbersome. Yes. It's very fluid. Like he's not like heavy or anything no. like that. Like he gets so this this place is the mirror mirror temple. It's um. Theo gets like trapped in a mirror. In, yeah, in a, in a mirror of something. And there's like the like, monsters that are coming out of the walls and yes. stuff. You remember this? Yes. And um Madeline gets sucked into a mirror. And this is this is kind of where you learn that the mountain operates on like Silent Hill rules. Yep. Where it's like kind of just taking her inner demons and transforming them into like real, yes. real things and stuff. Yep. And um you you basically so he's stuck in this giant Princess Zelda crystal. And uh, you throw him through the big eyeball, yes, right, yep. and that kills the monster. Yeah, it's it's one of those things where we're very much divorced from reality at this point. But it's, yes, it's, correct. I'm uh, I'm still having a good time. But um, the next chapter, uh, it is mostly just kind of regaining lost ground. Where um, Madeline has another panic attack. And um, it's exacerbated by uh, Battleline, who is uh, influencing you. You can't control the feather, as we mentioned. Yeah. And you fall a great distance down, like you. You print. right. This is like the um. What uh, what is this called? Like in narrative structure, when it's almost like the, the it's like the later conflict where yeah, you've like, come so far up this peak, and now you've crashed all the way back down. It's it's that low point before the climax. Correct. Right? Yeah. And um. It's uh, so you lose, you seemingly lose all this progress, and um, you wind up in this strange area full of like Mario Thwomps. Do you remember yes, these guys? Yes. And um, you you run into the granny again, and she just she keeps uh, trash talking you. It's like I yep. give you some encouragement. Right yeah, now. <laughs> exactly. I think now is it the granny who encourages you to embrace Battleline, or is that you? 
Yeah, yeah. Well, because yeah, she at first she's she's really kind of dragging you down, and then a little bit further into it, she's like, "Why don't you just like try to hash it out, right?" Yeah. And that's oh, I this is another part where I like the idea of it a lot, and I liked playing it, but I thought it went on like really long. Is this the battle line boss fight, quote where unquote, you, where you have to chase her? Yeah, this is so fucking long. Yeah, like I have in my notes. Um, the battle line final boss is so goddamn long. <laughs> like, what was this? 30, 40 minutes plus of you? It's fucking crazy. Well, because it is also abiding by the um, the the the, the, pr- the principal thing where it's it's all like trial and error. And, yeah, and yeah, it's, yeah. It's very There's no kind pace of to this boss. Figuring you keep out, failing, figuring out what like where do I have to jump? What do I have to do? And it's um, it. Like the the music is great at the time and it's kind of it's powering you through it, but it is kind of like I said, it's not like it's hard. Like I'm complaining that it's hard or it's tedious. It's just like it's doable. It's just there's it's so long. There are so many scenes and so many challenges just to embrace her and be done with this. But do you know what it reminded me of? Because we were talking about last this is gonna go back to last season and the season before, where we made a comparison where Genesis Noir with the finale of that game that went on for like an hour. Yes. And it's like, I was comparing it to journey where yep. the, the climax of journey is what? Like five minutes. It's very short. And it's really like, that's what it should like. Your, your, your emotional catharsis does like, it loses its impact if it goes on for too long. Correct. You, yep. know? you just kind of stop caring about what you're doing. It's like, I, I, I know my objective. I know I've, I've surpassed all these challenges. Like, just give it to me. You right. know what exactly. I mean? Like, yes. it's just, I, I, I understand the struggle, but at a certain point, I gotta, enough. I, we got, we gotta, we gotta say enough here, but correct. No, otherwise it's, uh, it's, you know, I think it's a successful chapter. Otherwise, you know, kind of uh, for the characters and then you, you kind of make your way back up the mountain using the feathers. Yep. So you regain all that lost progress. Um, and you also get the second dash here, which adds a whole Yeah, I didn't ra- expect this where because Madeline and Badeline kind of form into one person, it now, the, now, the game now implements a second dash. Yeah. Which, you know, c- complicates what uh, this already masochistic experience. Yeah, but it is a little... like So what it does is it makes certain things a little bit more doable, um, at least at first. And then, of course, they start throwing like the curveballs at you. It's like, yeah. how are you going to... Are you going to uh, work this into the gameplay? Sure. Loop, right. Mm-hmm. Um, so this is the the final story chapter is the summit here yes. of the mountain. And um, you kind of get like miniature redos of the previous chapters here. Yep. They make you sort of retread what you've learned yep. in every chapter. And I think it's kind of <laughs> cool about this where they have like the mile markers or something where they're telling you there are only 15 checkpoints to go, 14, 13. So yep. they kind of count it down. Um, one of my favorite parts of this whole thing is, uh, we didn't mention it. It's a very tiny part of the game. There's a couple, um, of those like, uh, viewing scopes, like, you know, the yes. things that you put a quarter in yep, yep, yep. and you can see a great distance. There's one here where you can see the top of the mountain with the flag and all the sound starts to drop out. And it's like, holy fuck, there it is. Got it. You know, I love that part. Yep. That was great. Um, and of course, eventually, uh, if you if you got what it takes, you reach the top. Yes, and uh, you sit there with battle line, and uh, I I did feel at the end of it, I was just like, holy shit! Yeah, you, know? <laughs> you, you do get a holy shit feeling that you did it, right? For sure. After after all that that strife, and um, you're kind of just in the same place as as the character is, you yes. know. Um, and uh, you know, in the ending, you get a reunion with all the other characters, and um. I, what I like is uh, what you were going to I was going to ask this. you about the cake. Yes. So I have a question for you. I didn't look this up. Mm-hmm. The more strawberries you get, is the cake better? Yeah. Yes. It's great, right? What are the benchmarks? Do you know? Um, like, how oh. did yours go over with the crowd? Did they love it? Yeah. It's like, so I, I looked up the different, um, I, I think if you get nothing, everyone's just like, yeah. <laughs> and then like mine, everyone was like pretty happy with it. But there's ones that like, if you get like every strawberry, there's all this like icing and oh god, um, amazing it. like ice cream and all this stuff on it. I think that's great. Is that like she makes a pie out of it at the end? Like, yeah. And depending on how many like, strawberries, because I only got like twelve or fifteen. They said the the family members and friends said to me, "Well, I guess this is a strawberry pie or is a strawberry whatever they make." Yeah, I guess it is. It's pretty funny, but uh, yeah, it's. Their reactions depend on how many you collected. Um, 
And uh, lastly, like this, there's, there's um, yeah, I didn't mess around with this, but there's uh, some post game stuff. Yes. Where uh, chapter eight is like a challenge level inside the mountain um, where she comes back later. And chapter nine was added as a, as a patch. Oh. And um, it is, uh, I cannot, I think it's, it's like, uh, you know, that level in Rayman Origins, the, like the land of the, land of the dead or whatever yes. mm-hmm. where it's like you can't die like yes. you have to complete all in one go that's what this is got it and um it's basically it's just a small postscript it's after the granny dies sure sure so sure. madeline just comes and visits visits her and, and kind of lets go of it i that's it for the story so i'd like to get into the conclusion if yeah you're, sure uh, if you're up for it mm-hmm. so i thought it was really interesting about how so there's obviously a lot of ways you could read this game in terms of I I really res it really resonated with me because it's it's there's so much like even I I don't you know I I think the the creator of this game is transgender and I think a lot of it is coming out is you know it's about the struggle of coming out you know one way or another and for me it really hit just as a as a matter of like personal struggle sure like even without like you know because I I'm not transgender but like in terms of the the voice of like the negative voice in your head like telling yes. you you can't do it or like Correct. every little failure is like see I told you you know right. like and that kind of thing and it's just trying to it's trying to beat you down right it's trying to beat you down and it's it's not only overcoming that but also accepting that part of yourself and like trying to turn it into a strength like like when they wind up collaborating but when they right? wind up collaborating i wasn't sure if madeline was gonna kill Madeline or they were gonna join up like right. i didn't know if she was gonna be like no i'm defeating this demon we're done right no but they actually like come together which is kind of aw- an odd choice right yeah and it, and it comes together in the gameplay sense too right which mm-hmm. is cool but in terms of like uh, it it seems to mean that kind of thing to a lot of people and i i really admire how how grueling it was just respect re- yes. out of respect to do you remember to, what your death counter was a lot was it over a thousand mine was yeah, i think so yeah um yeah it's it's not something i mean i remember my strawberries like super quick but it was sure. definitely up there uh and it's i i went out for a lot of strawberries too so right, I, my right, death right, count was right. probably even higher than yours right but um i did think it was uh, you know trying to really wrestle my my thoughts here um the team uh, allegedly did not consult with mental health professionals they just made it the narrative is sort of a collective autobiography of their all, all their own experiences, um, trying to take take care to fine tune the dialogue to be as sensitive as possible. How well would you say that it all comes together, and do you see the appeal? Um, I see the appeal from a, like a gamer's game perspective. I remember when I kind of got my ass kicked online for saying I haven't played it. Yeah. So many people said, dude, you haven't played Celeste. The gameplay rocks. Like everyone loves this game. Right. Right. And um, when it comes to more of the metaphorical stuff, I think some of the stuff that's a little bit easier is the like, you know, your things are trying to beat you down. You're trying to get to this mountaintop to almost to prove that you can. Yeah. Right. Or you're trying to get over something that something is maybe the negativity of this battle line, other side of it that tells you you can't do anything, you're going to hurt yourself. Yeah. Um, I, I'm trying to think. And, and those are the things that jumped out to me that I think are a little bit easier to, to not easier to understand, but are more apparent. U- universal. Yeah. More, yeah. Or at least, they're, yeah, more. What in I your say face. in the groups, I said it's like, it feels like doing push ups this yeah. game. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. 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 And I really like that occasionally where, like I said, there's a couple moments that didn't necessarily feel the fairest, but. It it didn't feel like torturous. Yep. It was just kind of this is what it is, mm-hmm. you know. And it's like it's the the uh, it's not undoable. Yeah, like, it's all doable. Yes. right. And it's I I I like playing a game that isn't going to just like I I didn't like there were some sequences in this game that were just absolutely ball breaking. Oh, absolutely. And, yep. But it just in my when I think about this game, I, I do have a positive uh, view of it. Yeah, like I remember my, not trepidation about playing this game, but a little bit of me of my hesitation to start it, not years ago, but within the past month or two, 
people tell me this game is really difficult. Like it's going to break my back to beat this. Yeah. And I'm like, I typically like games like that, but I'm like, man, how much brutal platforming do I want? Right. And then how pixel perfect am I going to have to be? Right. Right. And it, it's, it's, it's pretty strict, but it's yes, for it some, is. something about it just kept me going. Like there's enough encouragement. Like I said, the music is great. All oh, the visuals are great. The whole thing is like very clearly intent. Like I think in the very beginning, there is a message like you can do this. Yeah. Right. And I, I, I like that about it where it's, it's recognizing that, that life is difficult, but it's, it's empowering you to, to handle it. I was going to ask you if you think any other, any lessons can be learned from, mm. from the development of this game, like positive or negative. Okay. Yeah. That's interesting. I think I would go back to what I was saying about like this game compared to like Rayman origins and legends. Yeah. Like, I mean, did I enjoy playing this game? Yes. I think they didn't give you enough moments of what I would call like rhythm or pacing where, man, I'm really flying through this. This is clicking. We're getting through scene after scene after scene. Mm -hmm. I'm flying. We're jumping. Yep. It's a lot of jump dead, jump dead, dead, yeah, yeah. dead, 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 over and yeah. over and over. That's what bogs this down for me, yeah. right? Even though the game is explicit where they explicit in the sense where they tell you, yeah, you're going to die a lot. That's okay. It's about learning. Yeah. I wish there were a few more moments where you're really flying. You never do. Yeah. Like, un unless you're like a pro who has played this like five times or something. Never. Like on your first try. Yeah, never. Even up, up, up like the last couple screens, like I was still like, yeah, right, I'm I know. falling. <laughs> you yeah, know, like, correct. That's it. But uh, no, I, I think... I think in terms of the lessons that can be learned is that it is a very, they have a, a very specific idea for this game. Yes. Um, and it, it's start to finish. Like it's complete. Um, all the level design and the challenges are very thoughtful. This game like does feel unique to me. Even isn't that interesting though, where there's a lot of 16 bit stuff going around. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of platforming stuff going around, but the way this game combines those items is kind of unique. Mm -hmm. I don't really see a lot of games that play and sound and feel and have this kind of intention. Yeah. Not really. No. Uh, at least all put together as a package. Yeah, that's the thing about it is that it, it's a very... And and to think that it all came out of that little tiny 8-bit version is, yeah. is really something. It's really just extrapolating that idea of, you know, even going back to like Donkey Kong, like going up, yes. you know, and just, mm -hmm. just trying to... um really boil down the challenge of a game into into this this rock climbing mountain climbing experience right, right? Mm -hmm. and um i think that's that's the, the one of the biggest accomplishments is is just how specific it is mm -hmm. and comprehensive it is and I, something else that i think is is I, I mentioned it already but like the approach to accessibility is very sure. kind of humble and it's it's like acknowledging that i it's it's just one specific limitation of wanting to reach a wider audience is you have to include accessibility options. Right. And it's no matter how like intricate you want the clockwork to be, you know, there there's there's going to be some artistic concessions. Yes. And I, I think it was very well eloquently put the way she mm -hmm. she designed it. But I think it's a great game. I think I am going with a B plus on okay. this one. Uh what do you think? That's what do I want to give this game as a grade? I think this... Okay, I'm going to say this. I think I'm going to go with you that this is a B-plus game. I would say, it, like, in terms of my enjoy enjoyment, it's probably a little bit lower because mm -hmm. I'm just... Yeah, I like platforming games, but it's not like my, like, oh, man, like, I'm I'm not going to go pursue the strawberries and the challenges no, yeah, and all that yeah. kind of stuff. But I would say, like, in terms of what the vision was, what the intention is, and how it all comes together, and it is so, like... It is so tight in terms of the balancing. I think you have to go pretty high. It's really like, like it's, it's, yeah. Like it, it, I think it. There's, there's a couple spots for improvement, but it's really just nice that they gave a shit. Yeah, <laughs> it's like a lot of giving like, a shit in this so, one. So much, you know, like like care and and you know, uh, detail put into everything. I think it's a great game. I'm glad we, I'm glad we covered it. Mm -hmm. Um, hopefully we'll we'll cover some some fine indies in the future. Uh, are you wrapped on Celeste? I'm wrapped on Celeste. Okay. Uh, thank you, guys. And we will see you next time on Goddamn GameCube. Thank you.